Hey guys, before we get started, I want to invite you to comment below and just take a couple minutes, maybe share, tag a friend, um, and just start a conversation. These topics are developed based on your feedback, your questions, so the more questions we get, the more discussions we get, uh, just the more we can learn together. And so if you have something that you disagree with me, if you have something that you wanna to add to this discussion, just go ahead and comment below and let's get the discussion going. So now you've tested. Let's just say you haven't seen improvement like you thought you would. There's probably improvement here and there, but that gives you an opportunity to look back on what you did and identify things that you need to change in order to create the next cycle that's gonna be successful. If you test and you found all your numbers exceed your expectations and you're like, I'm right on track, then that's perfect. This just confirms, right, that the testing, the training protocols that you've developed are working, okay? So that's very, very important. So now what? Well, there's a short window after where you can deload. And this is really a shortened version of, of, of kind of the ramp up initially. This can literally be, I would think, one week, okay, after two weeks of testing, okay? So let's say you retest for two weeks. You can kind of deload for one week. Um, there's another way to do it where you actually create the uh, two weeks of testing as a deload, right? Just remember, anytime we're gonna test, compete, or get closer to competition, we wanna reduce the volume and increase the intensity. And that is just a great way to deload anyways. So a couple ways to go around that, work around that. But in general, you want to look at the retest. Remember, you want to use the same tests over here in your retest. From there, what you're going to do is you're just going to develop a new training cycle, cycles, based on your retest information create and identify new priorities. And this is the key, right? Maybe after five weeks of training, your muscle endurance is fantastic and it's no longer a priority, right? So maybe this muscle endurance goes to the bottom of the list. And now threshold work becomes that much more important. This will give you an opportunity to reprioritize your training, restructure your training protocols, and really start to you know, finalize the preparation for game day. In the latter portion of your year, right, the final six months, I don't like to risk everything on, uh, you know, on me getting everything right. There's always chances to improve, and so without sacrificing and without committing to a big retesting period, you can easily just place a retest in here every so often as a way to confirm that, hey, your training protocols are working, right? Or saying, hey, like, maybe two months in, you're like, man, I thought, I thought this was gonna be working, I don't know why it's not. This gives you an opportunity to kind of look at things, okay? This is a little too late to get in depth in a last minute, uh, like, retest. Definitely, uh, when you're within three months of your, your uh, game day, your goal, whatever that window is, um, you kind of want to shut it down and commit the last three months to, to just hard training. So typically at the three month mark, this is when you want to call any testing, any retesting, and you want to focus on training, right? This last push right here is really where the, the work, the culmination, the taper, the peaking is going to happen. So you want to take advantage of these uh, little, um, you know, intermittent tests to allow yourself to redirect training as needed. This might feel very overwhelming to you. There's a lot of information, a lot of things to consider. Don't be overwhelmed. In the coming weeks, I wanna lay out step by step what you can do to help better understand your goal, the 12 months leading up to it, and little things that you can do or make ensure that are happening to get the most out of your training and to reach your goal. A couple things to ensure, one, Make sure that going into testing, you reacclimate. Very important. The testing period that you have, make sure it's committed, make sure you're feeling rested. Make sure that these tests are measuring the characteristics and the demands of your goal. Finally, those tests should give you, 
should allow you to list a whole bunch of priorities. Only pick three of them. We can only work on so many things at a time. So after you write down your three priorities, you want to identify the retesting period because that's going to help you determine what you can do within a cycle. If you remember this layout, is five months. If you determined that three months was a training period, then we would have to condense this. You can see the value of training long term, a year, two years, three years, for athletes who want to get to the next level. Finally, make sure that the training between your testing periods focus on base building so each cycle builds upon the other. When you go into the retesting period, you can use this as a deload or a protected week or two of testing. Coming out of the retesting period, just realize that this is the home stretch and focusing on what needs to be done to peak for game day should be the priority. You can still include single tests here and there to confirm that your training protocols, that the direction of training is working for you. But essentially, this is pretty much, right, the home stretch. After the home stretch, game day, you know, that beach vacation, whatever it is, you're just gonna restart the process. This is a fantastic rhythm and cycle to get into that helps structure your year and ensures that you're making gains every month and every year.